Hi, I'm Jelly Bean Fitzhenry, and this project, Majestic Bald Eagle, was originally taught as a Zoom class. The pattern packet with instructions, pattern, and step-by-step -step photos is available on my website, jellybean.net, as well as all the brushes. Hope you enjoy. Underneath the eye area here, if you look at your photo number nine, you're going to see even brighter white little dibby dabs underneath the eye. Those are those little, little feathery um, hairs that are connecting on, onto the little bit of your beak area there. So you have a choice. You can either use your rake brush or you can use your liner brush. If you use your rake brush, I want you to just barely stick it into the paint, but don't wipe it off. Okay, see how you can see the individual little hairs? They're separated. Now, it, depending on the rake brush that you have, some of you may not have one that separates as much as this. Let me show you what you got to do to yours. Okay, so if it doesn't separate as nice as this one does, if you'll push it down, let me get on the camera here, push it down to the ferrule and then twist it. Okay, it's going to help spread those out. All right, so that you'll have more individual little hairs. This one, however, separates nice right away. Okay, so I'm going to just take and stick just the little tips. Now I got too much, okay? So I wanna get some of that off of there, try it again. I just wanna get on the little tips, okay? And then I just wanna carefully just little dabs of the brighter white under the eye. And if it's easier to use your liner, you sure can, and just little tips. Don't want to use a stylus because we don't want it to look like dipping dots. We want just a little bit of white texture under the eye. Okay, then above the eye, that little kind of eyebrow area that needs one more coat of white, especially this front, very front area. So I'm going to use my rake brush again. Now I'm going to put a little dab of paint in there, or paint, little dab of uh, water, okay, because I need it to come off the brush. But I'm going to use a little bit um, heavier or thicker now. Okay, make sure that you can see the individual tips. And I want to get that front little eyebrow, just little tiny strokes, but thicker. I want to get that a heavier white above the eye. And then pull a little bit back also across the top of the eye. And I'm just kind of almost pulling with a chisel edge to get that a bolder, brighter white. Using the rake, heavier paint, and just kind of dabbing it on. This top area here in his forehead, I want that to be brighter white, but I don't want to lose all my darker colors. So a little bit of water in the paint. get it mixed up here spread it apart and a lot of times what I do is I'll get the paint and I'll shove forward and what that does is it picks up extra on the tip so I'll load it I'll kind of squish it into the brush squish down and I scooch the brush forward and it allows me to get my extra on the tip okay so I want to get brighter white on the top part of his head here. Of 
pull, you know, either direction that it comes off easier. And also want to do the cheek. So down under the eye, I need to keep create like a, a cheek area coming out away from like where the mouth is. I need this to be a little bit brighter white here. Do short little strokes because I don't want to lose all the darkness in the rest of the areas, but I need that cheek area to be a little bit brighter. And then maybe some soft feathery lines pulling out from that so that it transitions a little better. Then I'm going to thin the paint a little bit more. Those areas I needed to stay thicker because I needed a good coverage. Okay, but now I want to do the back of his head here. So if you take from the eye and kind of angle up a little bit, I want to start in this area here, getting some brighter white. And then I'll pull towards the eye. Okay, now I want a, a slight transition between the forehead highlight and this one I just did. So just a few little lines in that other area. Don't cover it all up. Don't make it as bright. And I gotta I gotta turn this so I can pull my stroke. Just a few little strokes so you don't lose all your pretty color. But don't want it to be quite so dramatic. But I'm going to leave it like that. I don't want it to be a bright white. I want to still be able to see some shadow in there. But I didn't want it to look quite so separated from the other areas. Area. Down in here needs to be a brighter white. But I want to make it in a little bit more um, like tufts of feathers. So I'm going to pull almost like it's pointy and do, you know, some layers. But I want to get a little bit more in that center area. And still don't want to lose all my background color, but I needed a brighter white. And I'm doing it in sections. So it looks a little bit like it's feathers in there. A little bit more in a stroke. And I kind of skip around so it doesn't look like it's all so lined up. But I don't want to lose all my dark darks. Let's see if I tip this. I know I'm getting shine because it's looking lighter on screen than it is for real. Let's see. Maybe this way? Tip it that way a little bit. That's a little better. Okay, so just a little bit thicker in the center area. And then let's carefully transition it off to the left. But I don't want to lose all my shadow if I can help it on the left. some little individual lines to help break up. Or even on the very back, if you want to add some little individual liner lines, 
Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go pretty up our bottom feathers. So let's zoom out here. Now, everyone's going to be different. Okay. Uh, when you look at, okay, now I want you to look at the piece that I've got that I'm working on. Now look at my finish sample. Okay. Do you see the difference? What I did now is I need to go back and I need to darken some of the darks. Um, so more burnt umber. Uh, if you want to add more color, you could even use some burnt sienna. I may want to add whatever color is underneath my feathers. I may want to add some of that into the shadow areas. So for instance, if I want to pop up this blue area over here, I'm going to take some of my blue and tuck it in underneath the feathers, just like I did the brown. Okay, and the brown, if I want that to be bolder, because their brown feathers are pretty brown. Okay, they, 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 this is not just shaded white feathers here. These are actually brown feathers. So I do want to get more brown going on in those feathers. So I, I let me show you a couple things. So first of all, um, you have a choice. You can use your your angle brush and you know just do a, a corner load. Let's show you. I'm going to show you the pink, the quinacridone violet. Let me show you that. Okay. Now, just going to need a little little dab. And if this is dry, remember you have the option of wetting it before you put your color on. That way too, if you make a mistake, you can wipe it off easier. So if you want to moisten it with water first, you have that option. Okay, so some of these feathers, like I may want to tuck some of this pink in my shaded areas. Just float that in. And that'll give me more color in my feathers. So now you can play with whatever color, you know, and come up a ways. So whatever color is in your background, use that to tuck into your feathers. See how that makes them pop a little more? And so I'll do the blue, because I've got blue shine on the other side. Now, could I be creative and add a little something other color in there? Absolutely, I could. What if I wanted some green in between there or something, or purple? I certainly could. I could, um, especially if it's the two colors. So I've got the blue and the uh, quinacridone violet, so in the phthalo blue, if I put the two of those together, I get some kind of a, a purple. And so I could certainly do that for part of the transition. But I'm going to use a little bit of the phthalo blue. And you don't need much color. Colors are strong. But I can kind of float around. And the phthalo, of course, is really a strong color. So I'm going to just wipe a little of that back, just some water. Okay. Don't need as much. That's such a strong color. Let's see, I can go ahead and just float in some tints wherever I want them. Make those feathers pop a little bit. And I think that really helps. So um, you can start wherever you want, whatever seems to make sense. So I'm going to do, uh, you know, some blue on one side, some pink. I'm going to get some darker browns up above. And let me see what kind of purple I get if I mix my two colors that are next to each other. Let's see if I mix those, what I get for a purple. That actually is kind of pretty. Let me maybe get some of that in between. So 
So just go ahead and tint whatever you would like and make those feathers pop a little bit more. Just remember to do pale wash. Probably a good idea to go ahead and moisten the surface just to be safe. I'm living dangerously here, but I know how to fix it if I screw it up. And the way I would fix it is I would add some white on there and start again. Yeah, I like that, that transition of the purple in there. I think that's pretty. And then I've got uh, kind of pinky off on the other side here. So I'm going to go with that as well. Now, if you're having trouble getting a pale wash, you, you always have the option of adding a little bit of white into it to tone it down to begin with. But I really love the transparent colors. So if I can just get those to work. I prefer to do that. And you'll have an option if you need to, you know, clean up any of your white feathers, add a little bit more white, you sure can after. And you just kind of look at it one stage at a time. But see how pretty that is across the bottom area here now, getting more color going in between the feathers. Okay, now I, I know I definitely got to have more brown up on top. Somewhere in the middle, I want them to transition between the brown and the pink and the purple, the blue. So I'll start at the bottom and then at the top, and then I come back to the middle and, and get a little bit of both for the burnt umber. I'm going to moisten that top area just to be on the safe side. So wet the, all that feather area. Okay, and then a little corner load of my burnt umber, and it's really not much color at all, but I want to deepen in between my feathers here. they really are a darker brown feather in that area. Just kind of do one step at a time and look at it. I just keep building to get more contrast between the light and the dark. And if I mess into my white too much, I can touch that up again. But I do get a little bit more of a um, shade when I overlap at least just that top little portion of the white outline. It helps it to sink into the feather a little better. And just somewhere in between, you got to transition between the, you know, the brown and your background color. And it's okay to let them overlap a, a couple feathers here and there. A little bit of both color. And 
and I never know when to quit. I just, I don't know. I kind of, I really like this stage of it, just playing with it and adding the extra colors. So it just, and every time you do this, it's going to be totally different. You're never going to have two exactly the same, which is kind of cool. If you feel like your, your brown feathers need a little more warmth, use the burnt sienna because that will give them a warmer look. And if I feel I really needed to punch up some of the tips of the white ones, I could do a corner load with a titanium white and I could come back and just kind of grab a few little bottom tips with that too to brighten those up if they need to pop a little bit more. I think that kind of helps. So a little corner load of titanium white just to catch those bottom tips. I'm not trying to go too high up into the feather. And I want to be careful not to go too far down on his body with this because I want it to transition into my background color. So more of the ones in the middle. Now, the only other thing that um, I like to do on this, um, I'm going to show you spattering after, too. And the spattering is going to be optional. Sometimes people don't want to undo what they've already got. But I like there to be more contrast next to his head. So depending on what color you have in the area, that's what you're going to use and I'll just float there again. I'm going to moisten it with some water. So let's let me just show you on the one side here. Make sure that that's wet. OK, so I'm going to moisten that. And then I've got my my bluish color in there. So let me start with that little corner load and I'm just going to float that next to the E and just pull it out a little ways there again just kind of dabbing it I'm not trying to do perfect strokes you could do the slip slap but you're able to go ahead and and um, add extra colors you know, around the eagle, you know, and maybe even just kind of chop in so I don't lose all the feathers. And then pull some out. Just kind of wash it in. But I can deepen whatever I want around him. So once you float next to them, you want to pull that color out and you want it to just kind of blend in with the rest of the background. So if you need to, you know, add more water, add more water, or if you need a second brush to help out, you know, and just kind of slip slap that in there. But you can deepen any of those areas. And, and I do like to deepen um, closer to his beak area there, too. So I've got to turn him upside down to get at it, though. So I've got moisten, um, moisten above and below.
and I used um, the green in there. So let me get a little bit of that out. Now, I could have totally changed this to another color if I didn't like that green in there. I could have whited this out, slip slapped whatever color I want next to them. I'm going to use a little bit of that uh, phthalo green yellow. And I'm just going to kind of chop it in next to his fur area, or feather area. So see, I can play with my colors. And then I'm going to, I think, get a little bit more of the blue next to it, too. So I get a better transition of the blue and the green. Just remember to use lots of water. Try not to mess up my beak. So you're able to float around anywhere that you want to add more color, pump up the color. And because it's just kind of a, you know, irregular background, you just kind of slip slap the color in there to get it to be how you want it. And then I'm going to get some more yellow up above that, I think. Let's see if I can get a better angle. I'm going to let the yellow and green kind of blend together. I just want lots and lots of color. I just love the colors. I love the rainbow colors. All right. So. so I forgot to show you about the shading right here on the front of his neck. All right. Um, a little wash of something in there. So I'm just actually going to use my angle brush because I want this. In fact, let me show you the original here. I wanted this to dip in a little bit more in that area right there under his beak so really 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 water down your black you want to be careful that you don't get too much paint and i think it'll be safer if we wet that area first as long as your feathers are dry i would wet that area so that if you get a little touch too much paint um you get a little you want it really, really transparent. See how that's hardly anything on my brush. And I want to kind of just chop it in, going right on top of my feathers there, just in that front section. Now, I probably could have done it with a uh, rake brush, too. So always more than one way to do it. But that'll help to help that dip in a little bit. Right from the bottom of the beak. But don't go all the way down. You want this area, it's about two thirds of the way. You want this area in the front here to stay a brighter white. Um, and anyone that had a problem transitioning right there between the white to the brown, usually all you need to do is just add a few more little white uh, liner brush lines in there and get that to kind of transition a little bit better. What you're going to do is you're going to moisten your surface and it's better to do a little bit at a time. So do like a, a corner at a time. You're going to take your bright white paint and like a, a fan brush or any kind of a big brush will work, but thin down your white. 
least half and half. About the same for liner brushwork. Okay, then you're going to take the handle of another brush and you're going to hold it close to your surface and you're going to tap on the handle to create the spatter. And it's always a good idea to check it first maybe on your palette rather than your piece. You're going to see how big the dots are. Okay, now if you get it on an essential part of the, um, uh, like here, I don't want this little dot. See, I can just take the wet brush and I can just take those little white spatters right off. Okay, so if you get it on your eagle somewhere you don't want it, go ahead and take it right off. Let me wet the other half. It kind of resembles the look of the watercolor um, salt technique. But hold it close to your piece and you'll have a little bit more control. And I do want some, this is a good way to get it to transition on the bottom of your feathers there to get those spatters on that bottom half. So if you want to do a little bit more on the bottom than you did on the top, that would be fine. And then I guess, let's see, a little more up here. It's hard to know when to quit. You just got to kind of let it take a take its own little transition just get the little spatters i got on his on his beak there but otherwise i think i'll leave it alone he's nice and bright 